Hello, everyone. Finally, the moment that we all had been waiting for has finally came, and the 70th episode got released today. In this video, I'm going to show you all the details and Easter eggs that I managed to find. Yes, it definitely took me longer to create this analysis than other analysts I know. But as always, I found those hidden details and references that no one else could find. I think that's why you love me. So if you want to find every secret in the episode, so get your tea and snacks ready because it's going to blow your mind for sure. Let's go. In the description under this video, Dafouk had written three really important words. Something unexpected happened. So today we'll take a closer look at what exactly occurred in this episode. It starts with the location we could remember from one of the exclusive leaks that Dafouk had revealed to Elite Cameraman a few days before the release. We can see two cameramen equipped with the latest upgrades from the Alliance, and by the way, check out the sign on the door they are standing near at. In my analysis of those exclusive leaks, I have said that this site might have been no smoking. And I turned out to be right. One of the cameramen throws a grenade under this door's opening, and a powerful explosion occurs afterwards. There was no need for any fire and smoke indeed. Notice that the cameraman on the left is the POV from last episode. I can tell by his cool gun, and now we get a chance to get a slightly better look at it. As I see it, it's a regular shotgun, but upgraded with bayonets for close combat. Unfortunately, we don't get to see this guy in action, but maybe he won't be the only one among the cameramen with such a shotgun. As the camera moves to the right side, to the cameraman from the leak who's holding the flamethrower with the blue fire, we can notice the blood trace coming out of this door's entrance. It is probably related to the empty upturned toilet in the foreground, because we've seen Skibidi being able to bleed in the earlier episodes of the series. The cameraman with the flamethrower produces a powerful blast of blue flames right into the faces of the two upcoming Skibidi, setting them on fire. Check out that upside-down toilet that produces blue smoke, by the way. Yeah, it didn't become a skull like Skibidi did after the Titan cameraman fire attack in episode 51, but this flamethrower still seems pretty powerful. I think it's somehow related to Titan Cameraman's energy, because those flames are very similar to his core. As the camera zooms out a bit, we then can see the bigger picture of the current events. There are bodies of moveless cameramen without their head cameras laying in the foreground with some pieces of black metal around, which I cannot really identify, but I'd say it may be some parts of destroyed Skibidi bodies. Here I can definitely see a large black camera attached to some kind of vehicle. It actually looks like an anti-parasite jeep, but with a camera from a van. Maybe it's some kind of new Alliance vehicle that the cameramen used to get here. Speaking of where they are, I think the Alliance is trying to surround the huge Skibidi base and block all the exits. The guys from the beginning look like they're guarding one of the entrances to this underground bunker. Also, there's a large empty toilet tank with no Skibidi inside. The only thing that I found strange was how this toilet is shiny. I don't know if it's a new Skibidi look or if Boom is testing new textures. The whole location we're looking at is quite new though, and we didn't see such surroundings in the previous series. But don't worry guys, later I will show you what this map is, and you will be very surprised. As the camera zoom in a little, I can say that I noticed some humanoid looking body in the bushes in the right side of the screen, and there are traces of blood on it. Damn guys, this series is getting really dark it seems to me. It didn't even look like a cameraman's or a speaker man's body. He has a ski mask on his face and camouflage clothes, and oh gosh, he reminds me of the soldiers from Half-Life 1. But what the hell is he doing out here near Skibidi Toilet Base? Here we can see two cameramen. One of them is quite ordinary, but the one on the right really caught my attention. He's dressed in some sort of orange suit like a carrot and shooting with a double shotguns. I don't know why Boom decided to make him an unusual color because just a moment afterwards, this guy gets swooped to the side by the powerful explosion. The other cameraman managed to stay alive though, but he looks really worn out. His coat is being torn into pieces and he's missing his left arm. And although this guy had some really slim chances to survive and will get repaired by the medics of the Alliance, considering he'd make it to them in one piece, Another frenzy shot cut his changes to make it, and he gets pushed away by the powerful wave of reload fire similar to his unlucky orange brother. In general, this whole scene reminds me a lot of episode 61, and here Skibidi toilets also have wheels, despite the fact that we have seen this very rarely, and running cameramen also have a missing arm. But unlike those two poor cameramen, 
This POV is not about to let those Skibidi take him that easy. So he releases a powerful red plasma shot from his gun. And when we see it, we can definitely say that our POV today is the big cameraman with minigun that we saw from the exclusive leak and from the end of the episode 69. As I predicted before, this guy's weapon works as the powerful plasmic minigun which is capable of releasing red lasers. But instead of shooting with hails of lasers, this weapon actually produces just one long, powerful blast of laser, which is not bad at all. Apparently the Half-Life references won't end today, and this gun reminds me of this powerful weapon from that game. Our cameraman destroys Skibidi toilets one by one, and with this powerful laser he does it very cool. Notice how accurately the Skibidi hit the other cameramen with their rockets, and how not a single damn rocket hit the POV. It's weird. Maybe they were discouraged by such a powerful weapon in his hands. Once the POV big cameraman is done with the Skibidi helicopters, he gets into the air in order to chase the remaining Skibidi soldiers and flies over the road. And hey guys, you just look at that! As he flies past this black car on the left side of the screen, we can see how there's actually someone sitting inside. It's apparently a human, and he doesn't really look like the secret agent though. I can assure you that this guy was in the car from the beginning, watching the whole thing. Plus, we know that Boom is with the white terracotta brother right now, and he doesn't usually wear a robber mask, so it must have been someone else. But who? I hope to find it out later, but it's getting creepy at this point. Our POV destroys the skibbity toilets in his path one by one with his incredible strong laser cannon. By the way, you just take a look at this gorgeous view ahead. And I think those who played Half-Life 1 at this point noticed the boldest reference Boom made. This location is exactly the same as the legendary dam from that game. Not gonna lie, this map became iconic because everyone who tried to pass this location spent a ton of time here, including me too. But back to the series where for the Alliance, this dam was not an easy part of their mission either. This seems like the one of the giant entrances door to the Skibidi base with the bridge. POV keeps moving forward, destroying everything on his way and he moves exactly the same way I did when I tried that damn Half-Life mission. I gotta tell you, boom, thanks for the nostalgia, you made my day. Besides that, the POV moves two more cars on his way, but it seems to me that there is no one sitting inside of them this time. Also, no freaking Skibidi toilet has ever been able to hit POV with a rocket. It's just really dumb. When the POV successfully deals with two more Skibidi soldiers, he moves to the left, where the bridge can be seen, and we then notice something crazy. From the open entrance to the Skibidi base, a row of heavily armored Skibidi with shields and protective sunglasses is being carried out, who are also literally packed with rockets. But before we'll manage to take a closer look at them, another Skibidi helicopter intervenes, and the POV big cameraman shoots him and takes a little retreat. And meanwhile, we can notice the sign saying, High Voltage. The POV boldly lands right next to one of them and releases a powerful laser shot right at the two if his closed shields. But it seems like the trick didn't work. Even though the laser minigun is extremely powerful and destroys everything in its path, it didn't do a single bit of damage to this guy. And as the minigun gets to be in the need of reload time, the shielded Skibidi gets out of his shell. And he seems to be the guy from the leak we saw earlier. And now I can see that these two round things under his chest are two giant laser guns. Besides those, he has a hard hat, protective sunglasses that I already mentioned before, and four rocket launchers on his sides. Oh yeah, once again we see that goofy moment when Skibidi Toilet stops destroying the POV to turn around and look at someone who is sure to destroy him. Titan Cameraman flies up to the rescue, simply ramming this Skibidi at his full speed boosted by the power of his blue flame turbine. But unfortunately, the shielded Skibidi doesn't seem to be harmed at all due to the heavy metal protection on all his body. Meanwhile, Titan Cameraman disappears somewhere in the distance, and when the Skibidi turns to actually see there his opponent is, a strange refraction of light and space occurs behind him. At the same second, a huge explosion happens right in front of him, and then shielded Skibidi starts blasting from all his rocket launchers at once, apparently trying to destroy Titan Cameraman for good. As our blue cord Chad emerges right above this Skibidi using his jetpack, this freak starts aiming right at the Titan's core with both of his lasers. But our Titan is here to show how the two lasers attack should be actually done. He simply demolishes this Skibidi, and I think he even left a skull of him instead of the bare face, although the glasses and the hard hat remained untouched by the core fire. 
And while he's teaching this important lesson to the shielded Skibidi, another toilet sneaks up on him from behind and shoots his back with two lasers as well. What's weird to me is that Titan's jetpack didn't explode or even get damaged. It's probably made of very strong metal, or the Skibidi's lasers are too weak. Titan cameraman turns around and punishes this ridiculous guy with one powerful blow. By the way, the legendary dam was destroyed just like in this Half-Life mission. But it seems like the Skibidi keep coming without an end, as if they were the never-ending crowd of mobs. So there's another Skibidi our Chad has to deal with too. It is another flying Skibidi that seems to be protected to the bones, and armed with four lasers as well. I really think the recent model of G-Man became the main prototype for the improvements for the large number of Skibidi Army soldiers. Lasers seem to be everything a Skibidi guy needs nowadays. But you know what a Skibidi guy needs even more than lasers? A good old blow with the giant purple sword being held by the amazingly terrifying Titan TV man who came to his brother's rescue. And oh man, you just look at the posture of him there posing on this large piece of sandstone. Hey yo dude, who do you think you are, the King Arthur or something? By the way, the fact that Titan TV Man can teleport his sword arm allows him to fight in melee and ranged combat at the same time. And while our Giga Chad has been flexing his coolness, Titan Speakerman appears on the left side of the screen, accompanied by the unconscious Skibidi loosing his height rapidly, if you know what I'm talking about. Titan Speakerman lands on the rusty roof with ease and casually shakes the fire off his left sleeve. Titan TV Man jumps off the stone with the phrase that sounds like, come quick. And then, he's finally doing what we all have been waiting for since the last episode. He actually recharges Titan Speakerman's core. Which kind of proves the theory that I've made in one of my previous analyses, how Titan TV Man had actually been planning to recharge his little bro's core as well. But later, as all three of them will enter the Skibidi base territory, then something quite unexpected happens. The Speakerman's face, speakers and guns on both of his arms start glowing with bright red sparks and they start rotating rapidly and i assume that he got greatly enhanced by the power of titan tv man's core meanwhile titan cameraman was looking to the left all this time and when the pov looks to the same direction i understand why there is a bunch of flying skibidi of different types just waiting to strike the titans also there are acid barrels that can be seen on other skibidi flying in the air but unfortunately for those dudes, they didn't really get the opportunity to use all this stuff in action, because Titan Speaker Man gets really mad, and decides to reflect his iconic scene from episode 58, where he also got surrounded by a bunch of flying Skibidi, but then jumped into the air and used an awesome circling bombing attack, bringing all his enemies down at once. But this time, this scene was not only mirrored, but boosted a hundred times more due to the enhancement of power Titan Speakerman got from his Titan TV Man brother. So now he thrusts all the flying Skibidi one by one at crazy speed with his own body. And then, when he gets surrounded by another batch of them once more, he does this iconic move, which looks extremely awesome. But this time, instead of using his arm cannons, he shoots the powerful blast of laser from his recharged core and starts spinning around like crazy. Besides, take a look how Titan Cameraman tore off the acid gun from one of the fallen Skibidi and attached it to his right arm, as he already did with the saw arm from another Skibidi in the first part of episode 67. Meanwhile, Titan Speakerman mirrors another iconic gesture of his. After getting a bit tired after the rage fit he just had, he flies over and sits comfortably on this piece of sandstone, which reminded me of the scene from episode 26, where he sat on the toilet of the defeated enemy, as if he had been celebrating his tough victory. And it seems to me that in this scene, he's experiencing the same thing, don't you guys think so too? And what makes this scene even cooler? That in the contrast with his calm posture and the way he sits as if he was holding a nice cup of tea with his right hand to rest after the hard day at work, there are multiple bodies of defeated Skibidi falling to the ground all around him. Titan TV Man gives him a satisfied, sassy look to show that he's being proud of his short-tempered brother and says to him, Get off there! <laughs> but the time to celebrate has not come yet. There is some strange kind of noise that can be heard. And oh my god, do you guys see what I actually see here? This is no other than DJ Skibidi Toilet that came back to us literally from the ashes of the past. I mean, we saw this guy in freaking episode 6. What the hell, dude? I'm so happy to see you. He looks super goofy, especially in circumstances like that where stakes are high. 
and the atmosphere of the whole show is as serious as it has never been before. But you just look at his dummy. I cannot help but love him already. He's wearing a gray beanie with a magenta headphones above it, as he already did in episode 6. But this time, he's also got something in store to protect himself from the big boys in front of him. He has the giant rectangular speaker with the inscription Pioneer on it, which is the popular music company, by the way. Protective sunglasses and four intimidating guns on his sides. Also add to it his large size and three robust strider legs. This guy really prepared himself before the final battle, and he even got the proper musical accompaniment to pass the vibe check. And besides, the way he emerges from the hill reminded me of episode 66, where Skibidi Strider that looked really similar to him appeared in the same manner. But suddenly, something really unexpected happens afterwards. An even larger Skibidi appears behind DJ Skibidi, who doesn't even suspect anything weird, and tears him apart with three massive powerful claws. It seems like this poor DJ toilet was just a decoy for us, the viewers, who weren't actually prepared for the real deal here. And holy crap guys, you just look at this. It is no other than Astro Toilet in the flesh. All the predictions that I have made about the epic re-emergence of Astro Toilets being the next leveled up generation of Skibidi Toilets, they seem to be coming true, and the words cannot describe how excited I am because of this. But we'll talk about my Astro Theories once more a little bit later. And for now, let's get back to what is happening on our screens. First of all, let's take a closer look at this guy. His design seems to be really simple without any excessive details or pieces of equipment in comparison with other Skibidi. The major thing that he's got is three futuristic claws with some sort of orange energy threads in every single one of them, and in seems like the functional of these claws is quite wide. Also, this guy reminded me of episode 60, where we could see the similarly looking Astro Toilet, but his helmet looks pretty much different. By the way, I noticed how distinct the bottom sides of his toilets are. The guy from episode 60 had concave bottom, while the Astro Toilet from 70th episode has some small round detail attached to it. Also, their faces are completely different, especially the facial expression and the overall mood. So I can say that those two Astro Toilets are two different characters. The guy from the 60th episode was hectic and wild, while this Astro Toilet is chill, eerie, and confident. And what's more important, this guy can actually talk with distinguishable words and sentences, which brings him on the whole another level than the rest of Skibidi. When Titan Cameraman shoots a burst of blue flames from two of his cannons into this Astro Toilet, he easily redirects it back to the owner with one of his claws. But thankfully, Titan Cameraman manages to block this attack in time and stay majorly unharmed. Astro Toilet dodges the purple energy strike from Titan TV Man with ease, and then he smiles while Titan TV Man says a really sharp phrase at him, which sounds like, Who the f do you think you are? You can listen to it yourself. <laughs> and in response to this, Astro Toilet smiles creepily and says the following thing You all will die. <laughs> After that, Titan TV Man tries to hit him with the trick he already pulled with one of the G-Clones from the first part of episode 68, but this Astro Toilet seems to be a bit too overqualified for the job, so he manages to dodge this attack without even looking back. Damn, this guy is too good I'm afraid. And it looks to me that he may even be one of the most important Astro Toilets in the whole race. I can state it also by the look at his face. He's really cold-blooded and confident. And this eerie smile is something that reminds me of Skibidi Scientist in his glory years. He then grabs Titan TV Man's sword with one of his futuristic claws, and sends it back to the owner at great speed and precision, something he already did to Titan Cameraman with his energy blows. And then he simply switches to ultrasonic speed as if he was a spaceship from Star Wars or something, and disappears in the thin air. What a creepy chat, I must tell you. The POV Big Cameraman turns around to take a look at Titan TV Man, and we see how he managed to block the Astro Toilet's toss with his left hand that was pierced by his own sword. He looks at his hand for quite some time, then slowly removes the sword, and the expression on his main TV screen switches to the very, very dissatisfied emoji that we also saw in one of the leaks a few days before this episode's release. And now I understand the context of such an expression completely. Which I found to be quite funny, though, is how Titan Speakerman continued sitting comfortably on the sandstone throughout the whole conflict scene, it seems. 
And I mean, come on, dude. I know that you wasted quite a lot of powers while showing off your new cool abilities and stuff. But how about to help your brothers? This didn't look really modest from the outside perspective. Meanwhile, after the battle was over, another trio appears. And it is our three lovely ladies who apparently got here to help the trio of Titans. What a pretty nice move from their side. And check out their upgrades as well. Camera Woman got two more guns, so now she seems almost unstoppable to me. TV Woman doesn't seem to get any major upgrades in comparison with those two, which is a shame though. In turn, Speaker Woman got badass looking katanas behind her back, so she looks extra spicy now. But honestly guys, I'm not really sure here, maybe Drill Woman is the superior one after all. Also, I noticed another high voltage sign in this frame, and I already told you before how I saw something similar in the beginning of this episode. That would probably mean that the whole base has been getting its energy from the dam nearby. But as the bridge above it was destroyed by Titan Cameraman, the energy supply was cut, which led to something important I'll talk about a bit later. And not to mention this CCTV camera above the girls' heads, which works in a similar manner as the camera I caught in the first part of episode 69, it spies over those who enter the Skibidi bunker. POV draws his weapon and shows the girls with the gesture to the left side, hinting that it is time to finally get inside the Skibidi base and comes there first for anyone to follow him. He flies past Titan Cameraman who seems to be quite worn out once again. This guy can't really catch a break, can he? Probably. The damage that he received from this Astro Toilet did actually leave some trace, so I really hope he'll be okay by the time the second part of 70th episode comes out. But anyway, POV Big Cameraman finally bursts through the blocked aisle, passing through some inactive toilet and facing another guard of the base's entrance. And then we're getting back to our old friends from the Elite Alliance Squad. It turned out that everything we just saw has also been translating onto the White Terracotta Bros tablet screen. As the translation ends, we hear something unsettling on the roof of the elevator our survivors are getting up in. Then the lights go out, and it must be connected to the electricity being cut due to Titan Cameraman's actions I mentioned earlier. And the only source of light that stays in the dark is the bright red spot from the black speakerman's main speaker. The other cameramen are turning their flashlights on, and then the loud thump can be heard from above, so all the guys are looking up simultaneously. And friends, check out this absolutely crazy thing here. Is it the ghost of cameraman whose silhouette can be seen on the wall? It cannot be a reflection, so it seems that Dafuk keeps playing his horror card even further. Damn, that really gives me chills. It seems like someone really big and angry is trying to get to them. And on this very thrilling and anxious note, the episode ends. Wow, what a ride it was, guys. This episode was definitely worth all the wait, and it was absolutely crazy. I'm expecting the next part to start with the guys in the elevator. And also, I was happy to see how some of my predictions for this episode came true or start coming true for real. For example, I'm glad how the plot arcs of Titans Trio and Trio of Girls are already overlapping one with another and I was absolutely excited to see Astro Toilet behaving, well, the way I wanted him to behave and even more. And that was all for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel not to miss my new analyses and other interesting videos. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!